I'm finding that most today do not understand the term sonship. Don't understand what it is to be um, a son of God. Now, I want to draw the distinction that a son of God is not a babe and is not a child, but has developed and has matured to a place where um, they are positioned by the Father, placed by the Father in the family of God as sons. And we see this in Galatians chapter 4. Paul the Apostle says, Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, differeth nothing from a servant, though he be lord of all, but is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the Father. So, even so we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his Son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. And that word adoption means the placing of sons. This is sonship. This has nothing to do with uh, the word adoption that you hear in the world today where a family might adopt a child. No, this has, this has to do with the placing of sons. Um, so, we go on to read in verse 6, And because you are sons, God hath sent forth the Spirit of His Son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Wherefore, thou art no more a servant, but a son. Listen to what he's saying. You are no more a slave or a servant. You are a son. And if you are a son, now notice he said if. If you are, if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. Now, understand that Paul the Apostle is saying this according to faith. You, you're still a babe, you're still a child, if you, have, if you can't believe the Word of God, if you can't believe the truth. Now Paul said, a child differs nothing from a servant or a slave, right? Though he be Lord of all. Though he's born into a family and he's uh, you know, heir to the throne, he can't take the throne until he comes to the time appointed of the Father. Just like Solomon. Solomon couldn't become king over Israel until he was, until he was placed, until he was positioned by David in succession to be placed as a son. Until that time, uh, Solomon was under tutors. He was being trained for the throne. He was being prepared for the throne. Same thing with you and I. Uh, babes and children are not fit for the throne. They've got to be trained to know how to rule over the people, to, to be just, to be, um, to be fair. And so, Paul is not saying that we're not the sons of God. He's saying, now are we the sons of God? But it's according to faith. Everything that God gives to us, folks, is by faith. You know, if you can't receive it, then you can't attain to it. You have to be able to believe the Word of God. So if you don't understand the difference between a babe, a child, and sons, or sonship, then you'll never attain to sonship because you don't even know it exists. You have to understand the principles of God's kingdom. And in the Jewish customs, the Jews have what's called the bar mitzvah. When it, and that's uh, when Jesus um, 
left Mary and Joseph and was and stayed in Jerusalem. So he never went with them at all. And it's not altogether that he left them. He just, like he said, did you not know I'd be about my father's business? Well, Jesus had come of age. He's now 12 years old. And so he had full rights to um, be about his father's business. And so just because Jesus didn't step into his ministry at 12 years old doesn't mean he couldn't have. He could have fully stepped into his ministry, but the world couldn't, wouldn't receive him at 12 years old. They wouldn't receive him when he was of when he when he came to 30 years old they wouldn't receive him so there's definitely not going to receive him at 12 years old even though he was found in the temple teaching them to the degree that those that were listening said it says they were astounded by what he was teaching they were astounded by his teaching and by his authority and by the the wisdom that he had at 12 years old but the world wasn't wouldn't receive him at 12 years old so he humbled himself to Joseph and Mary until he came to 30 years old. And what he did was he went back and worked in the father's business, equal partners with Joseph in the carpentry business. Because as a Jew, he had come to 12 years old. He come to age where he's now looked at and considered as an adult in the family. He's not a child. He's not a babe. He's not a servant. He's not a, he's not a slave in the family or a servant in the family. He's now part of the family, recognized as with that name of that family and the authority in that family. And so there are those in the body of Christ today that have been saved. They're, they're born again. They're babes. Um, and then there's those that even grow up and develop to be a child. There are children. But to, to understand sonship and understand development in the body of Christ, this is a lack today. People are really, really lacking knowledge today. And God said, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. If you have the mindset that I'm a babe or I'm a child, uh, you're not going to be able to appropriate what's been provided for you fully in the kingdom of God. You can't step into your position, your placing, you can't have the authority uh, of Jesus Christ over demons and devils until you understand who you are in Christ. You have to understand what you have been given in, in Christ. That's not just handed to you because, you know, like a magic trick, it's just presto, you have it. No, you've got to understand it. You have to come to an understanding. And that's why the scriptures, Paul says here, they're under tutors. You're, you're being trained. You're under tutors. You're being trained for the throne. Right now, there are children in the body of Christ that have not come to sonship that are being trained. Now, if God would to give to you and I the understanding, like Paul's saying here, now are we the sons of God, and we had full understanding of that and tried to walk in it without training, we wouldn't be fit for the throne. And so God is patient with us and he's long suffering with us and he's training us and he's tutoring us to prepare us for the throne. Jesus said, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in and to him and I will sup with him to him that overcometh. Behold, to him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne. Well, that's the whole idea of being under tutors, is we're being trained, we're overcoming in these battles, in these scrimmages, in these uh, training process, we're overcoming and developing and growing up to where we can sit with Jesus Christ in his throne. Now, I can assure you, babes in Christ and children are not going to be sitting with Jesus in his throne. You say, well, wait a minute, Brother Joseph. Jesus said, lest you become his little children, you can't enter his kingdom. That's where we start. You start out as a babe in Christ. You're just a babe. You can't do anything, right? You just depend on God's grace and you just drink in the milk of the word and you just, right? But when you become a child, 
you have to start learning to obey. You have to uh, go through disciplining. You have to go through ch- uh, chastening. Um, and we even see where one of the sons of a father that had two sons said, Father, give me my inheritance. And he went out and spent it with riotous living. He wasn't ready for his inheritance. You understand what I'm saying to you? He wanted his inheritance and the father knew he wasn't ready for it, but he gave it to him anyway, but he hadn't been prepared for that inheritance. He didn't know what to do with it when he got it. I had the Lord speak to me one day and he said, he said, I can drop a million dollars on your back porch right now. He says, but what would you do with it? I mean, we think that sometimes, oh, if I had more money, then I could do more or I, 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 I wouldn't be in the situation I'm in. And God is saying, no, the money's not a problem. That's the easy part. That's the simple part. Preparing our hearts to be good stewards and to be servants that God can entrust with the riches of his kingdom, not just spiritual, but also physical riches to be able to, that God can take a million dollars or even a billion dollars and place it in the hands of his servant, of his steward, right? And he knows they're not going to go use that money for themselves, that they're not going to use that money for their own comfort, but that they're going to use it for the up building of the kingdom of God. Folks, God desires to have sons on this earth like Jesus Christ, like his own son. And the scripture says, bringing many sons to glory like his own son. This is not being taught today. The teaching of sonship is not being taught by the, for the most part in the church today. Most in the church do not even understand the difference between babes, children, and and sons never mind understanding what it means to be what the bible says a man of god fully developed to the measure the stature the fullness of christ you can be a son of god sit with jesus in his throne and still not attain to the measure the stature the fullness of christ that's why it doesn't say a son. It doesn't say a son child in the book of Revelation. It says a man child, fully developed. You remember in the scripture uh, where in John it says, "I speak unto you, little children." I speak unto you, children, and then it says, "I speak unto you, son, the sons," and then it says, "I speak unto you, men." There's three different classes. There's the babes, the children, and the sons. But then there's the fullness where you come to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ to be like Jesus a fully developed not only a son Jesus was a son but he's also a man you can't be a a perfect man without the son of God fully developed within you and that's the man child Now, it may sound a little bit hard to understand and it may be difficult to grasp. Uh, Paul the Apostle saw the revelation of this. Did he attain to the full measure of the statue of Christ? No, he didn't. But Paul said, now are we the sons of God? So he did understand the the truth uh, by faith that God had made provision for us by faith to experience to receive sonship. Paul understood that and he understood the Jewish customs about serving in the family until you come to until you come to the sonship age of 12 years old and then your place. Paul knew that cuz he was a Jew, right? He was raised as a Jew. He knew what it mean he meant he knew what it meant to be a, a servant in the family of a Jewish family and then be placed as a son. Paul knew what that was. And he was sharing it with us that that's the way God does it in the spirit. The time appointed of the father, that's like a bar mitzvah for a Jewish boy. But then he goes on to say, after he says, let me see here. In verse six, and because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Wherefore, thou art no more a servant, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. 
How be it, listen to this, how be it then when you knew not God, you did service unto them which by nature are no gods. But now, after that you have known God, or rather are known of God, how turn you again to the beggarly elements whereunto you desire again to be in bondage? What's Paul saying? He's saying you should have went on into such un, in, into into fu- being fully developed, but you didn't. He says you return to the beggarly elements. That's what's going on in the church today. Instead of the church going on into full development and and training for the throne, the scripture says here that they go back under the beggarly elements. Listen, if you can't rule over your own spirit, you certainly can't rule over other people. If you don't have self-control of your own spirit, don't expect God to use you in a greater measure. You've got to be able to rule over your own life first. You've got to be able to rule over your own spirit. And this takes training. This takes maturity. God's not going to just appoint anybody, folks, to the throne. You're not just going to sit on the throne because Jesus Christ died on the cross. That's not why you're going to sit on the throne. You're going to sit on the throne with Jesus Christ because you've been prepared for the throne. Jesus was asked the question. Remember when he was asked the question, can we sit? Remember the mother asked? She says, "Can I'd like you to appoint my sons, one on the right hand and one on the left. And, and Jesus said, that's not mine to give but it shall be given to those in whom it was prepared by the Father. Prepared. Remember Jesus said about Peter, he said, Peter, flesh and blood didn't reveal this unto you, but my Father which is in heaven. The Father reveals that position of sonship and it's Christ in us, the hope of glory. Jesus Christ is growing within you and I. And that's what it says in the scripture, bringing many sons to glory like his own son. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Not bringing many babes, not bringing many children, but bringing many sons. And that's Helios, which is fully developed, fully mature sons of God. So, You can settle if you want to for being a babe. But Paul said those that are babes are carnal. He says, he says at a time you should be teachers. You have one that need to teach you all over again. The first things of God, just the first principles of God. He says, um, he says, you're yet carnal. He says, "You're, you're babes. He said, there's strife and divisions among you. He was dealing with people that thought one would say, I'm a Paul, and another one said, no, I'm of Apollos, and they didn't understand. No, it's not a matter of being of Paul or being of Apollos. You're of Jesus Christ. Jesus is your leader. And so Paul and Silas, you know, Paul and, uh, you know, Paul, he's trying to get them to, to follow Jesus. That's the whole thing. Jesus said, follow me, or Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. He was constantly trying to get their eyes on Jesus. And these carnal uh, Corinthians were keeping their eyes on Paul and Apollos. And Paul and Apollos was saying, look, get your eyes off of us. We're just men. We're men of God. We're servants of God. Uh, but we're just men. Don't look at us. You understand what I'm saying to you? So when you have carnal Christians today, they're the ones that... Um, that are affected uh, when ministers fall from grace or when, or when they do wrong. They think, well, my pastor was in an affair, so it's okay for me to do it. No, you're not following that pastor. You're following Jesus Christ. You're going to give an account for your soul, for your life. You, you, you're not going to be excused because your pastor fell into um, immorality and you know you think, well, it's okay for me to do it now. Because I'll tell you, folks, that's what the world's being taught right now about the president of the United States. The world is being said, well, if the president can do it, then we can do it. If the president can lie, we can lie. Well, you need to understand. No, we have a higher standard. Amen? And man is not our standard, no matter how great that man is. Our standard is Jesus Christ. 
And he never fails. He never sins. You, you won't find a place where Jesus, when he was tempted in all points, yet without sin, he, was, he never sinned. He never failed. And so he is our example. He's our standard. He's our savior. He's our deliverer. You understand what I'm saying to you? So these carnal Christians come along and they say, I'm of, uh, for, for example, I'm of uh, Jimmy Swagger or I'm of, um, you know, just different different ministers that are out there. I don't just, can't think of them. John Hagee. I'm, I'm of John Hagee. I'm of, no, you're of Jesus Christ or you're not saved. You're of Jesus Christ or you're not getting ready to go to heaven. You got to follow Jesus. Jesus didn't say deny yourself, take up your cross and follow uh, follow Jimmy Swaggart or follow some other minister. He said, take up your cross. He said, deny yourself, deny yourself, take up your cross and follow me. I remember one morning I woke up and the Lord spoke to me and he said, follow me. I know what he meant. I know what he was saying to me. Don't follow man. Don't get your eyes on man. Man will fail you. What does the scripture say? It says, he that puts his trust in man is cursed. Cursed is the man that puts his trust in man. I think a lot of times that's why God lets ministers uh, fail in front of us because we put them on pedestals. You understand what I'm saying to you? You got to get your eyes off man and get your eyes on Jesus. Lift up your eyes higher and see Jesus. He's high and lifted up. His train is filling the temple. The angels cry, holy. Folks, a, tr a true minister of the gospel will get your eyes on Jesus. He will never, ever, ever cause you to put your eyes on him. Amen? And so then you have children. Children in the body of Christ are the ones that have not developed. They don't know really who they are. They're learning who they are. They're, they're tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. And um, the Bible says, be not children tossed to and fro. So children are affected by di do different doctrines. But when you come into sonship, you're not going to be moved. You're not going to be, um, you know, shaken. By doctrines or, or, or spirits. or You have come to a place where you're standing on the foundation, Jesus Christ. You come to a place where you've been placed by the Father. No one's going to touch you. No one's going to move you. You've been placed by God. Folks, that's what it's all about. When you exalt yourself, you will be abased. But when God exalts you, when God places you, no man will touch you. No man will, 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 you say, well, wait a minute, Jesus was crucified. What, what's to make you think you're going to escape being uh, persecuted? Or I didn't say we're not going to be persecuted. I'm saying we're not going to move. We're not going to be affected by persecution. Jesus said, when you're persecuted, he said, leap with joy. He said, rejoice when you're persecuted for righteousness. How can you rejoice and leap for joy if you're not solid, if you're not sound, if you're not rooted and grounded in Christ. Amen? So folks, we need to grow up. We need to develop into the measure, the stature, the fullness of Christ. We need to let Jesus develop within us. I hope that I said something that inspired you and helped you to understand because a lot of folks today think that everybody's the same. You get saved you know, and, and there's a lack of teaching and people don't know about the, the, the process or the progression of growing and developing. But Paul makes it very clear when he says, a child differs nothing from a servant, though he be Lord of all. Listen, Solomon could have never been sitting on that throne he could have never sat on that throne while David, his father, was on the throne. David had to die before Solomon could take the throne. And David is a type of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is our spiritual David. He went to the cross and died so you and I could sit on the throne like Solomon. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? 
But there's those that are teaching right now and following Solomon in his backslidden condition. They're following him in the in dark arts and they're following him in, in, in the mysteries. They're following him in Babylon and Egypt and all the things that he searched out. But how come these secret societies today and the people that are following Solomon, why don't they read the scripture that's where Solomon said he repented? He came back to God. He realized it was all vanity. No. They don't do that, do they? I say if they're going to follow Solomon in his backslidden condition, if you're going to follow Solomon in his rebellion to God and his curiosity into the to evil and wickedness, why don't you follow Solomon when he repented of that? When he came to the point where he said, this is this is the whole matter. This is the full matter. This is it. To fear God and depart from iniquity. This is the whole duty of man. After all that Solomon searched out, after all he went through, he came back round circle and he said, what I learned is that the most wisdom, because the Bible says the beginning of wisdom is to fear God. And Solomon said, what I learned was to fear God and depart from iniquity. That's the sum of the whole matter. Amen? If you go beyond that, if you get to the point where you have more wisdom or knowledge than um, fearing God and departing from iniquity, then you're uh, gone too far or you're gone beyond You've gone beyond what God has for you. You've gone beyond what God has made provision for. You know, look at look at um, look at Lucifer. Right? God didn't make pr uh, provision for Lucifer to take his place on the throne, but Lucifer wanted to take God's place. Lucifer had a place beside God on the throne, but Lucifer wanted to be God. He said, "I will be like the Most High." Well, today God has offered you and I that place beside him on the throne. Are we going to be like Lucifer and say, I want more than that? Because that's what the world's being taught today. You're a God. You're gods. Now, Jesus never said you're gods. He said, you say you're gods. You are the ones that say you're gods. And there are people today on the earth that are saying that the demons are gods. They call them gods. Same spirit that we see in the book of Acts is the same spirit that's coming to this generation, folks. So if we will humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God in due season at the time appointed of the Father, He will place you and I as sons in His kingdom. Amen? Fully developed, trained for the throne so we can rule not only over the world and rule over demons, rule over darkness, but we can rule over our own spirit. Amen. Praise God. You'll never be successful until you can rule over your own spirit. If you allow your mouth to say things you don't want to say, then you're not, you don't have rule over your own spirit. If things are coming out of your mouth that you don't want to come out of your mouth, you know, you see people that where they just get emotional and things got coming out of their mouth. They have no rule over their spirit. Now, the Bible said that that's like a man with a city with walls that have been destroyed. No protection. No guard. Nothing. No. We, you and I, need to guard ourselves. We don't. You don't just say anything to anybody. You've got to have a rule over your tongue. You've got to have a rule over your word. And it's not altogether that you and I are ruling over our own spirit. It's we're letting the Holy Ghost rule within us. Amen? You're never going to sit with Jesus in his throne until, you're sitting in, until you allow him to be on the throne in your heart first. He has to be Lord. He has to be king before you can be ruling your own spirit. He teaches you. He trains you how to rule your own spirit. That's why Jesus said, and I'm closing, Jesus said, learn of me 
I'm meek and lowly in heart, and you'll find rest unto your soul. Jesus didn't say, I'll just give you rest. He said, I'll, he said you'll find rest too, right? He said, I'll give you rest. But he said, then beyond that, you can learn of me and you'll find rest. There's more rest. Remember, Solomon was all the during the time of his reign in Israel, it was peace. God was good to Solomon, but Solomon, because of the women that he, all the women, God told him, he says, all those women are going to make you go astray from me. And he certainly did, didn't they? They certainly did. Solomon searched out everything. But there was peace all the days of Solomon. Remember, Solomon's a type of wisdom. What is the Bible? What did Jesus say about wisdom? Amen? The wise man built his house on the rock. Over and over we see the wisdom of God. But wisdom is just the beginning. The beginning of wisdom. That's just where we start. But there's so much more. So don't just stay in that place where you just start at the beginning. The beginning of wisdom or stay in that state of, you know, a babe or a child. No, it's just the beginning. You're just getting started. If you've got the fear of God, you just started your journey. You can't even begin your journey until you have the fear of God. I know this to be true, folks. You cannot even start growing and developing in the Lord until you first have the fear of God. That's the beginning of wisdom. Amen? And everybody that's born again should have a fear of God. That should be where you, your birth with that beginning, with that wisdom. You fear God. And then you go on and develop. I probably didn't share this the way that I really wanted to, but I hope you get something out of it. God bless you.